Welcome, everyone. Thanks for watching this show. This is the special edition PGA Players Championship show that is going to be taking place Thursday through Sunday at TPC Sawgrass. And of course, that is my favorite course on the planet that I've played in my life. Um, welcome, welcoming to the show a colleague from gambling.com, Bryce DeWine. Welcome to the show. This this kid is really good. And I can call him a kid because you can see the age difference right now. And that's why I brought him on the show because these 20 somethings and even the 30 somethings are, you know, they bring a whole new you know level of ideas and strategies to all sorts of uh, betting topics. And he's very good at everything he does. So he's a real professional sports better. He puts his own money behind his work. And I think he's a guy that I'm going to tail this week with the picks that he has for the Players' Championship. And sometimes his picks, you know, will help you with your DFS lineups, too. It might be a player you didn't think about too much. Right, welcome to the show, Bryce. How, how are things going today? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me on, John. Excited to be here. Yeah, this is great. So as you can see, I have uh, the 17th hole uh, right behind me there, uh, behind the chair. Um, of course, I'm not there, but... I get goosebumps every time I this event comes up. And what's really interesting about this event is that it's played in March. They tried in a couple years in May, uh, and they moved it to May because of the uncertain weather conditions that happen this time of year at Sawgrass. So the weather conditions are going to be much more difficult than when they played it in May and you had the minus 20s, minus 22 under par to win it. In fact, if the conditions get, you know, gnarly, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see the winner under 10 under par. No, no one gets the double digits, much like the Arnold Palmer last week. The key brace, as you know, at this course is you've got to put the ball in the fairway. So driving accuracy, those players in our models that uh, can drive the ball well and play from the fairway, even if they have to sacrifice 20 yards of driving distance to get it in the fairway, it's much better than playing out of that rough. And I've played out of that rough, and just two-inch rough, and you can lose the ball if you're playing you know, without a caddy, uh, you'll, and you'll never find it. Uh, plus, there's all kinds of hazards. There's just tons and tons of beautiful wildlife that I wouldn't even know what species they are. Uh, recent years, I haven't seen any alligators, uh, so those those things are gone. But the uh, you know the island green is clearly the the hole. When you come through that stretch on 16 for the par five, and then you stand on that tee, when there's Bryce, when there, I've never been in the water on 17. I can honest to God say that. Yeah. However, I'm not. I'm aiming for the middle of the green every single time, no matter where the pin is. But when you're playing it recreationally, you're not going to see a pin like uh, the one behind me on a Sunday pin placement, which is tucked lower right and about 10 feet from the bulkhead. I mean, when you start aiming for that, you are a professional and you're willing to take a chance of putting it in the water and possibly losing $2.2 million in prize money. It's just amazing. And, uh, you know, the swirling winds make all the difference in the world in this whole on this course, uh, but driving accuracy for those that are doing the, uh, the the DraftKings lineups, and we'll take a look at my player pool in a little bit. But driving accuracy to me is is number one on this. So, Bryce, tell us who you're looking at, what you think of this course, and what player or players do you think are going to uh, control the course if possible? Yeah, um, I looked at driving accuracy and the approach, just like you mentioned as well. Um, last year of the 20 players who shot seven under or better, nine of them found the fairway more than 60% of the time, while 14 hit at least 70% of greens in regulation. Um, the guy I'm going to back this week to win is Brooks Kepka. Just one of the big reasons is the number. He opened up at 48 to 1 on FanDuel. That's now down to 36 to 1. He's 30 to 1 now down on uh, DraftKings, but you can still get a 40 to one at bet MGM Sportsbook. And I know betting on Kepka at non-majors can be risky. He's made it known that he rarely gets out for anything besides the major championships, but I think that could be changing. Um, at the Phoenix Open, he mentioned that being ranked in the 20th world golf rankings is kind of embarrassing for him. Um, <laughs> and then he went, he went out and finished third that week. So we know that he's a motivated Kepka at this number could be key. Um, 
he's finished in the top uh, 16 in three of his last four events. He took ninth at the Hero World Challenge, third at the Phoenix, 16th at the Honda Classic, where he gained 3.3 strokes on approach and two off the tee. Um, when he's on and motivated, he's one of the best players in the world. And uh, t usually at the top of the odds boards with John Rahm at 10 to one or Justin Thomas. So I think at 40 to one, he's worth a play here. Yeah, I like that play, 40 to one. Those are the numbers I like. Anything from like 25 to 80 to one are, yeah, we, and we put, I put pizza money size bets on these things and, and you're, you play these much bigger than I do. And for good reason, because you do well with them. Um, but there, there's a lot of players, I think, that, um, for example, I don't think you want to chase John Rahm at 11 to 1. I remember there was a major last year, uh, but he was, I think it was the PGA. He was like 9 to 1 and uh, started out with two bogeys in the first six holes, and you could have got him at 27 to 1. So my point is, with live betting, available to everyone now in the states that are legalized it, it, it if you like any of the favorites you should actually wait especially if they're teeing off in the afternoon because somebody will, somebody will go 66 65 and uh, put that board that score on the board and that's going to change everything and it, it'll change the favorites too just en enough that you, you'll, you'll get a better price but i'm going to um, show my player pool now which is right there. So among this list, this is a list that I create each week for the, the PGA, uh, you know, clients that I, that I have and those that uh, watch the shows on YouTube. Um, and, you know, Jonathan, Jonathan Vegas is coming up, uh, num you know, one that you have to have in a lineup. And I, I, I saw that and I kind of, huh? But Again, to your point, Bryce, you look at the, the stats that he's put up, and he is a good driver of the ball, and he seems like a, you know, like a, a, a driver of the ball like a Steph Curry in basketball. When he gets hot, he, he just doesn't miss. Uh, so I think some of the names here, like Corey Connors, uh, I think is – I mean, he's always going to be on the list at this event. And a name that you don't see is Jordan Spieth. And his history here, other than the first time he played it, I think he was T4 – uh, he, he's missed the cut more times than he's uh, done well. You know, he, I don't think he's been in the top 20 ever since. It just doesn't suit his style of game. Um, any names on here that you would uh, you know, care to mention that you think uh, are probably good drivers of the ball and maybe you know, possible leans on? Yeah, just kind of going to the same thing about good guys that are at higher numbers traditionally. Like Dustin Johnson was 40 to 1 too. And when he's out, he's also one of the best in the world too. So just looking at him as a possibility, because you're rarely going to get him at that type of number. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that name too. Um, and this is, you know, this is truly going to be a four day event. It, it's going to play like a major. It's the deepest field of any golf tournament on the PGA Tour every single year. And uh, it's just wild. And, uh, you know, to go there to the tournament, if you like going to tournaments, guys and gals, this is one you got to go to uh, because you can walk around and it's, it's, you know, it's warm. And most of the time in March, it, it's not going to be severe weather. However, this weekend, notoriously has severe weather in it and it can come out of nowhere. Uh, it's, it's almost like a like Scotland, except it's like, you know, 50 degrees warmer than Scotland. <laughs> But we'll have to see. You know, I'm really excited. It starts tomorrow morning already. So we'll get rid of my player here. And um, anybody who wants that, that list, just uh, send it in a comment and uh, I'll make it available for download. Now, um, any top 20s that you're looking at? Uh, I just have one prop, and I actually like Rob to finish in the top five at plus 280 on FanDuel is the best number you can get him. Um, over the last 24 rounds, he ranks first in strokes gained approach and strokes gained off the tee. He's also gained 53.6 strokes total in ball striking, um, which leads the field. I think, like you mentioned, if conditions are hard and uh, the course plays difficult, you want someone that's going to consistently keep it straight, keep it accurate, and 
Rom can do that. We saw the viral putt or video of him missing the 11 inch putt, which really exasperated his short game struggles. But I think he's too good and he'll figure that out this week. Yeah, that's good stuff, Bryce. That's good stuff. Yeah, for some reason, I, I, I think it's too obvious that Corey, Corey Connors is going to be a top 10, but that, that's kind of my lean here for what it's worth. You're the expert. I'm just kind of throwing it in there. Um, and then any, um, and you see any long shots that are intriguing to bet on? Uh, yeah, Brian Harmon at 150 to 1 on DraftKings. He's a guy who's a traditionally a grinder as well. Um, he could benefit if the course is difficult. He ranks 12th in bogey avoidance this season and was 27th in the same category last year. He finished third here a year ago in the event and has three top 10 finishes and nine starts at this tournament. So I think at 150 to 1, he's worth a shot at DraftKings. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's real good stuff. And always remember, folks, you want to you want to try to get the best price. So it, it definitely behooves you to open up several accounts. I would recommend BetMGM in addition to DraftKings. I think uh, those are my definitely the two most used that I use. Uh, so make sure you, you do that because uh, these lines can be just a little bit different and every little bit of difference makes a difference when you win. <laughs> yeah. So uh, any final uh, closing thoughts here, um, Bryce, about the event? Uh, I'm just looking forward to it. A lot of people consider this like the fifth major of the year. You have a loaded field, 47 of the top 50 golfers in the world rankings. Um, it'll be nice to talk about golf instead of like the Saudi tour or something else. And like just the playing of golf is at the forefront this week. So no Phil Mickelson, no other nonsense. That's true. I did see he apologized. I don't know if that takes back what he said or not. But, um, <laughs> I guess he's recognizing that what he said was kind of uh, <laughs> you know, one of those, uh, man, Phil, when did you start drinking whiskey like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, he's, he can be controversial. And it's, uh, I think that's why he's so popular. You know, he's one of those guys that uh, when you watch him play, you, you, that smile and everything, he just has fun. Uh, but I think he ought to get a better publicist, in my humble opinion. I uh, agreed. Keep keep him out of that, uh, you know, uh, making the, the wrong statement at the wrong time. <laughs> but anyway, I can't wait to watch this thing. I'm going to have it on the background while I'm working on the uh, March Madness, and this is quite a great time. Both of us have plenty of articles over at gambling.com, so make sure you get over there. It's gambling.com slash US slash news. I think both of us have stuff on the Canadian site, too, which would be substituting CA for the U.S. And uh, a bunch of other guys, you know, our good friend Larry uh, does incredible work on the sports legalization process and what the uh, schedules are for uh, various states to go uh, live with, uh, you know, app betting and just, reg just legal sports betting. And you do that yourself. Is there anything else you want to add uh, about gambling.com? Yeah, I just think it's a great website. It just has all of the promotions in one place. Um, you have all the latest deals with the sports books that are going on the promotions. And if you sign up multiple places, you can have a ton of free bets and can feel comfortable about placing these golf wagers and take a shot maybe on some longer shots for a bigger payout by using these promotions. Great stuff, Bryce. So I'm going to thank you for your time here. I'm sure you and I will be in touch with each other quite a bit in the next four days. So thank you for watching the show, everyone. And we'll be back with another edition of the PGA Tour show here on the YouTube channel of the Predictive Playbook. And until then, remember two things, that with your head and not over it, and may all the wins be yours. <laughs>